This is the Tuesday, June 20th meeting of the Transportation Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works, and I am the Chair of the Commission. Uh, Beth, if you are ready, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jamila? Here. Carolyn? Yes. And I do not see Adam. Are you here, Adam? No. I, I do not see Adam, but I will let you know if he arrives. Okay. They're all set. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Okay. So I see um, uh, a lot of folks from the public here. So um, I this is a time for public comment. Um, I would ask that if anyone is here to speak to uh, a, an item on the agenda, um, we have updates for uh, previously submitted traffic coming requests, and we also have a discussion of uh, traffic and parking in the vicinity of Bombix, Pine Street, and Florence. So if anyone's here to speak to either of those items, I would ask that you reserve your comment until we take those items up for discussion. But if there are folks here to speak to the commission about things that are not on our agenda, um, this is the time for public comment and I will um, recognize you and you can address the commission. Uh, is there anyone here to speak to the commission on something not on the agenda? I don't know if that's something you're interested in doing. Okay, I see two hands. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, I just need your name and city of town of residence for the record. Um, and I do ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. So again, these are for items uh, not on the agenda. Amy Meltzer, you are up first and we will unmute you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was primarily coming to express gratitude for the barriers on New South Street that are finally making it impossible for cars to drive up the bike lane. Um, and so that's like my primary thing. And I think I just want to tag on to that um, an experience of a little bit of feeling like I would appreciate if this committee had more ways to be transparent and communicative. I, I'm sure you're all overstressed, but I had been emailing at that time, Jim Nash, starting in 2018 about this issue, um, the mayor, my own city council person, and it took sort of a sudden happenstance, it felt like to finally reach the right people about a month ago. And then uh, Chief Casper went and looked and made a quick decision. Um, but my experience was it was, I, I was just getting no response from anyone ever. Um, and similarly, when we put in a traffic calming request for Olive Street, we weren't notified like when the meeting was happening or what had been decided. And I'm just, you know, I, I just want to put in a plea for, you know, I'd like to be involved. And it's it can be often very difficult to find out what's happening, when it's happening, um, and to just get any kind of response. So, but I'm very grateful for the barriers. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay, any other hands for public comment? Um, yeah, I'm trying to to raise my hand. Donna, I don't know if you can hear me. This is Jacqueline McCraner. Okay, hi Jacqueline, we can hear you. Okay, great. Jacqueline McCraner, Northampton. Um, Donna, I'm curious if there's a way to get on the uh, a future agenda to talk more about um, truck route escape signage in Ward 3. And that's okay. my... Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for your comments. This is a public comment section. Um, why don't we um, it, Why don't we communicate offline, Jacqueline? And I believe I have your email address, and and I we, I will be in touch offline. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else uh, have any comments for the commission? Okay, I don't see any other hands. Okay, so next is approval of the minutes from the prior meeting, May 16th, 2023. May I have a motion for positive recommendation, please? Deborah. Motion. Seconds the motion. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Was that Devin? 
I was going to approve it, but someone else uh, uh, did, and I just seconded the motion. Uh, so who who put out the motion? I did. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay. Hearing none. Beth, please call the roll. Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Uh, Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And we still don't have Adam, okay. So that passes unanimously. Thank you, Beth. Next up is reports for uh, reports from departments and subcommittees. I'll start with a couple of updates from DPW. Cities contracted with Caracas Construction Corporation for full death reconstruction of Winter Street, which includes water and sewer mains and service connections, as well as sidewalks. And you know, that construction is scheduled to be complete by this fall. Our, pave, our annual pavement markings project will bid in July. And this project is going to include repainting all the double yellow center lines, white lines, stop lines, white arrows, speed hump markings, parking spaces, and crosswalks in the city. So fairly significant mobilization and, and level of effort associated with that. Um, we also have a Safe Routes to School project ongoing. MassDOT has contracted with Gomes Construction Company to complete improvements to enhance pedestrian safety near the Bridge Street School. Uh, we expect the contractor back in town next week. And uh, also just a, a kind of an ongoing update on Damon Road. Uh, motorists should expect delays at the intersection of King Street and Damon Road and alternating one-way traffic for curb installation. That project is scheduled to be complete by the end of this year. Anyone else with any updates for the commission? I have a quick update. I don't think we talked about this at the last meeting, but we've pretty much closed out our Florence streetscapes plan. And unfortunately, Gomes um, could not fit in the bike rack installation and the wayfinding sign installation. So we're gonna have to do either find someone else or just do that in house. So that's a little bit slower than, um, previously we had anticipated. Um, and that's probably the only thing that's, um, you know, top of mind at this point, so thanks. Okay, thanks, Carolyn. Anyone else with any updates for the commission? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to matters before the commission. The first is a discussion of traffic and parking issues in the vicinity of the Bombex Center for Arts and Equity located at 130 Pine Street. Um, so I know we have um, a lot of folks from the public here, and the way I would like to do this is uh, I have a few comments. I'm gonna ask uh, the police chief, uh, uh, Carolyn, director of planning and sustainability, and Nancy Forrestall, our parking administrator um, to sort of talk about things um, from the, the city's perspective. Um, we are joined by Cassandra Holden from Bombix, who will also speak, um, and then I will open it up for public comment. So I'll, I, I will kind of kick things off and and say that um, it, I, I think it's time to have a public conversation about uh, parking and traffic concerns uh, in the vicinity of 130 Pine Street. Um, we have um, kind of uh, heavily trafficked roadways, um, kind of a tricky intersection um, at, at Park Street by the uh, Sojourner Truth Memorial statue. Um, and, and we understand that um, there, there is definitely um, an influx of cars um, when Bombix has uh, events at, at certain times of the week. Um, so one of the things we want to do is, is just kind of go through what, what we see as uh, potential issues um, and just kind of hear what people's experience are, is and, and then hear from Cassandra about some of the things that Bombix is working on um, to help alleviate uh, some of the issues that we're seeing. So um, as I mentioned, we have kind of a, a tricky intersection by the Sojourner Truth Memorial 
Um, we also have uh, a, a lack of continuous sidewalks um, that is sort of in the whole area. It's kind of a residential area that is bordered by an industrial area. Um, and it's a place where motorists aren't necessarily expecting to see pedestrians. Um, so, it, you know, any um, uh, areas um, with heavy traffic or with traffic that sort of come in for special events uh, can be challenging for us. Um, and so what we want to do as part of this conversation is try to, uh, you know, just kind of understand people's experience and then see what we can come up with for solutions. So, Chief, I don't know if you want to jump in and, and tell us what you're seeing in the area. Thank you. Yeah, we started to become aware of this a few months ago when it sounds like there's been a, a few meetings between some neighbors and organizers at Bombex. So there's been some communication there and then some communication with the city. Uh, and to us specific for this meeting, uh, lots of concerns about cars parked, a lot of cars suddenly parked on the street, right? This is a neighborhood that normally really did not have a lot of cars like this coming in for events. and. Um, all the issues that come with that. So driveways that are that are either fully or partially blocked, cars parked in front of fire hydrants, cars that are parked on both sides of a street, narrowing the travel lane and concerns about, you know, allowing for emergency vehicles or two-way travel. Um, and then concerns about pedestrian safety because all of a sudden there's people walking in this area, especially later at night when events are getting out. Um, whereas the director mentioned, it's just kind of unexpected. You know, this is not an area that historically has really had people kind of walking around. So all of a sudden, when you have, you know, uh, people out in a community walking around later, um, it was concerning for some residents. So um, it is a tricky area, as the director mentioned. I'm sure all of us have, have been up there, I would imagine, and kind of looked at it. And, and you know, sidewalk condition, location of crosswalks, lighting, all those things um, really weren't designed for high volume of pedestrians to be walking around, especially walking uh, from the Elks, um, if that's where people are parking up to the facility. So it does present some kind of interesting challenges with that. So in response, I mean, our department has some limitations on what we can do. So in response, we have had an increased um, presence up there during events and we have done some ticketing. I don't believe we've towed any vehicles out of the area yet. You know, neighbors have called when, when driveways are blocked and we've gone up and, and issued some citations um, for blocking driveways and such. But that's kind of where we are with it now. So I'm actually just really looking forward to this conversation to hear everybody's input, hear what Bombex has been up to. I know Cassandra is going to speak with us about um, efforts they've made to mitigate some of these. And I know some neighborhood folks are going to share some of the experiences that they're having. So looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, Carolyn Mish is our Director of Planning and Sustainability. Um, Carolyn, you want to um, let us know what you're seeing in the area? Sure. Um, I mean, this intersection is not diff that different from other intersections in the city, and it's been a problem, I, I would say, for well before Bombix ever was a thought in anybody's mind, you know, that that angled um, entry there for where Pine Street meets Park ha is a wide intersection and it's just, um, it's hard to see and there are cars that do come around pretty quickly around that corner. So I'm, you know, I don't, it's not surprising when you start to add more people to an uh, already problematic intersection that, that it becomes, um, you know, more concerning. I think that, you know, DPW has done a good job with some other intersections in, in that have similar similar geometries um, that are sort of um, low, I would I would assume low cost um, sort of quick uh, potential ways to modify some of the problems that you have there. Um, DPW um, address some of that up just up the block in front of Lily Library. There was um, a similar sort of problematic angle there. And also on South Main Street where that meets Elm Street um, or Nanatuck. So I think there are things that, you know, we could look at to address that um, and narrow that crossing and also make it um, um, potentially maybe do some other things to slow traffic there. 
Thanks, Carolyn. Um, Nancy Forrestal is the city's Park Enforcement Administrator. Nancy, do you want to tell us what you're seeing in the area? Thank you. When these concerns were brought forward, we began monitoring that area to become very familiar with the layout um, and also to see what um, maybe Bombex was doing, um, how the, the parking situation um, was, and we found that Bombex um, has made a concerted effort um, to put out signage. Um, we did see that there are highly visible signs, um, no parking in an area that's been added to now. Um, on Sunday, what we saw was um, no, don't block driveway signs. So there's been a concerted effort to place these signs. Um, I've also had parking enforcement up there monitoring um, the areas to see whether or not um, before the event begins, whether or not we could bring to uh, Bombeck's attention and maybe put out a, a call to, you know, a particular car needed to be moved. And they've been doing um, a good job at making um, public announcements and also putting out their, their emails on where to park and where not to park. Um, we did see a definite improvement with the addition of the parking next door. Um, in the, the commercial building that before wasn't available. Um, the number of, as, as staffing permits, the number of tickets that were issued um, have frankly been minimal because they're not seeing the violations. Um, in particular, they're looking for within three feet of the driveway, 20 feet of the intersection, blocking hydrants. I'm not saying that that hasn't happened. Um, but that as far as being, you know, looking back at the stats for tickets being issued for them, when the officers are going up there, they are not seeing these violations. If they do, um, they are definitely issuing tickets. We have not towed any vehicles um, from that area that I'm aware of. Um, but I am seeing a definite improvement with the addition of the parking next door. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Okay, so um, now uh, Cassandra Holding from Bombix has joined us and I'd like to invite her to speak to us just about um, kind of her operations and um, how they've uh, been changing and um, I heard the efforts that she and her staff have made to, to kind of um, uh, improve uh, parking conditions. So welcome and uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I'm glad we're all having this conversation today. I think it's really important, you know, over the year and a half that we have been operating, we have tried a number of approaches um, from October of 21 to October of 2022, we paid to rent the lot next door at 140 Pine, which is the former, former grammar school. Um, and then at the end of, at the end of that time, um, the owners of that property um, substantially increased the amount that they wanted to rent. So we entered into a seven month negotiation with them, which has now concluded and we have a new lease with them to use that lot, which kicked off on June 1st. Um, during that time, while we were negotiating with them, it's, I think, important to point out some of the other things that were happening sort of behind the scenes to mitigate um, the, the impacts that, you know, the traffic, the parking and traffic, you know, what was going on in the neighborhood. Um, so during that time, the Young at Heart, which rehearses on Monday mornings, and they have a large audience of seniors who need, you know, adjacent parking because they're not going to walk a long distance they actually paid to rent the lot over at 140 Pine Street. Uh, the producers of The Power of Truth, which was a two-day conference that took place in April, late April, they actually reached an agreement with um, the owners of the property next door, and they paid to use that lot for their event. Um, we also, during this time, negotiated a rental agreement with the Elks, um, which is, as you pointed out, like it's a little bit of a distance. It's really not much farther than in downtown Northampton, you know, if you come to a show at the Academy of Music and you, you know, you park in town or you park at the garage, you expect to walk. But I think in Florence, in this residential neighborhood, and because when we first opened, 
we did have this immediately adjacent lot, it took some time for us to, you know, condition our audience to going to the Elks parking lot. Um, that said, you know, from the time that we opened in fall of 21, you know, we've been sending emails to every ticket holder, telling them which lots to park in, asking them to be respectful of our neighbors, to not block driveways, to not block fire hydrants. Um, we commissioned several um, several iterations of signs as our parking paradigm has changed, you know, discouraging attendees from parking on the street, directing them to the Elks or directing them to the community center, you know, as our agreements evolved. Um, and then also for larger events and during this time where we were renegotiating our lease, we also ha had a parking, a paid parking attendant for our events to help direct people to the correct lots and also to, you know, park most efficiently in the 18 spaces that we do have in front of our building um, and prioritize that for folks who had mobility challenges. Um, certainly for some of the programming that we have, we have a, you know, we have more folks arriving with placards or um, license plates, you know, requiring accessible parking than the three, three accessible spots that we have on our property. Um, for all of our programming, we are asking staff to park in the back in our, um, you know, we have a backyard playground area. So all of our staff is parking in the back, which maximizes the number of spaces available to the public in front of our building. Um, so, you know, we've really been doing our best, you know, as our situation has changed to message to the public and encourage people, you know, to be respectful in the choices that they're making human nature being what it is, we know that that's not always perfect. Um, the neighbor, there's a neighborhood listserv and I have shared my personal cell phone number with that group. So on occasion when someone is parking, blocking a driveway or a fire hydrant, you know, I'm able to receive that message from the neighborhood, make an announcement from the stage, you know, and, and get our audience to be compliant with, um, you know, with, with what needs to happen. Um, I do wanna also say, um, thank you to Chief Casper. Having that um, the sign in the pedestrian crosswalk, I think, is really helpful. Um, I do notice that, you know, the traffic moves really quickly through there, and vehicles don't necessarily stop or slow down. So just having that visual cue that there could be a pedestrian there, I think, you know, is making that that intersection safer. Um, I wish people would go even a little bit more slowly, but. Um, hopefully, you know, we can work collaboratively to develop some plans that support that in the future. Um, and then I wanted to mention one other piece that's perhaps tangential to the parking, but um, which is that we will be installing some additional exterior lighting on the side of our building so that the path from the parking lot over at 140 Pine Street to our property will now be more clearly lit. And we have some, um, you know, a little bit of grounds work that we need to do to really make it easy and clear for people tra to traverse from that parking lot to our door. Thank you, Cassandra. Can you um, just uh, kind of mathematically help us to understand um, your occupancy and you know how many cars you expect for a given event and where those cars might be able to park now that you have the new signed lease? Sure. So. Um, so our maximum occupancy is 300 attendees at an event. Um, and, you know, based on the experience that I have producing, you know, events, small events like the ones at Bombix or larger festival events, we typically calculate about two and a half passengers per vehicle. Um, you know, this is backed up by our ticketing data. You know, most people buy, buy two or more tickets. Occasionally, you know, we will have a solo attendee in a, a single vehicle. So for our events, you know, we're really trying to park about 120 to 150 vehicles for a sold out show. Um, so that would be sort of the maximum load in the community. As I mentioned, um, our lot immediately in front of Bombix can accommodate 18 spaces. The lot next door at 140 Pine um, can accommodate about 60 vehicles. Um, right now, that number is probably a little bit closer to 50. Um, as the Goodgens are in the process of reorganizing some of the vehicles and other machinery that's parked in that lot. 
and they have agreed by um, the beginning of December, not December, the beginning of September, that they will reline that lot because right now some of the spaces are not clearly delineated um, and it can really be much more efficiently used, you know, once people know clearly where they should and should not park. Um, additional vehicles will park on Cordicelli and on the side streets in the community. Um, there are about 50 spots that um, can be used in the little plaza where Masa Mexicano and Sam's um, and Ascendance are located, the little convenience stores down there. Um, and then, um, you know, if people are parking well on the street, there are probably about um, another 18 to 20 spots on Pine Street that people can utilize. Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sort of helps us to imagine what do we have for overflow onto the side streets? How many people can reasonably expect to be expected to fit any parking lot? And what are we looking at for, for on-street parking? So thank you for that. Um, sure. And I would also add that the Elks parking lot, which you know, is a little farther away, um, you know, that lot, if all of the spaces are used, that can accommodate a couple hundred vehicles. Um, Again, most people prefer to park a little closer to the venue, but that is available as an overflow lot. And we did pay to rent that for the past several months. Okay, thank you. So you at this point, I, what I'd like to do is open it up to the public for uh, comments. Um, I, I would ask um, anyone who's interested in speaking to raise their hand um, and, and we will recognize you. Um, and, and I just need your name and city of town or residence for the record. Um, I would ask that your comments be limited to two minutes um, and that your comments be addressed to this commission. Um, and, and then when we're done hearing from the public, we'll, we'll have uh, further conversation. So is there anyone who wishes to address the commission on issues of transportation, parking, um, or traffic around 130 Pine Street? Okay, Carrie, you're first and we will unmute you. Go ahead. Hold on just a second. Okay, hi, um, my name is Carrie Cuthbert and I live at 122 Prime Street, which is um, right next to Bombix. Um, and I just wanted to say a couple things um, to the commission. I think um, Chief Casper sort of outlined all the parking issues that we've experienced. And um, I wanted to just acknowledge all of the work that Bombix has done that as Cassandra has laid out because that um, they have made huge efforts. I think part of the problem here or the challenge really or the puzzle is that like unlike other, um, you know, sort of music and cultural centers in town, like the Academy that, that um, Bombix doesn't have easy access to like robust off street parking. So um, that I think that makes it a challenge. And, you know, the things that we've experienced in terms of parking, you know, we've had people blocking our driveway, we've had, you know, increase like the narrowing of the street makes it hard to, in terms of visibility, getting in and out of our driveway, all of the things that have already been talked about. You know, I, I do think and hope that the, um, the new agreement with the folks next door will help a lot. Um, I don't know how that's gonna work with the bigger shows, um, but something I want, and I don't know what the city can do, but I, the two things I would I really wanted to say was that I think what I've observed um, is, is that when people park on um, like both sides of the Sojourner uh, Truth Park, that actually is, I think, creates some of the worst problems in terms of, um, you know, making the street so narrow that it's hard for cars to get down. I see people like trying to turn around when and, and trying to find parking there. And I, so I think if the city could do something like have no parking or just on that, on the Sojourner Truth Park, I think that would go a long way towards safety, at least in this little piece of, uh, of Pine Street. And, um, you know, I don't know what else the city can do um, to help Bombix find adequate parking, but, you know, maybe someone has, you know, a, another neighbor had suggested at one point, could there be a shuttle from Elks up and back to, um, you know, to Bombix, like maybe that would, would encourage more people to park there and then let them be able to, to um, access Bombix's shows without um, all the problems we've seen with traffic and parking on the street. Um, so um, again, yeah, there's been a lot that's been done and it would be great to just keep a real focus on the safety um, here 
because it, it's, it is concerning. Um, and I think that's all I've got to say. So thank Okay, you. thank you for your comments. Next is Patricia. Yep, go ahead, Patricia. Okay, um, so, uh, yeah, I live uh, right next to Bombex also, and um, they have made lots and lots of effort to um, alleviate the parking problems. But when there are big shows, there is just not enough parking. And I wanted to um, reiterate that we do need the city's help. Um, we need something so that the, you can get down the street. Um, you know, the other, Goodgen had is letting people park there, but the other day I, I did send a, I, I sent a picture where um, there was cars parked down one whole side of the lane by Sojourner Truth, and then another car just parked right in the middle of the, the lane. So you couldn't go up or down the street at all. Um, my husband got very angry and he did call the police um, that night, but um, it is not, when there are cars parked on Pine Street like that, it's not safe. And I definitely think on a lot of the nights when the big shows, there's definitely more than 18 to 20 cars parked on the street. Um, so, you know, maybe a, maybe a shuttle, but could we get some no parking on Pine and on the lane that um, make it easier so that even like if you want to walk around the neighborhood, um, during a show, you could feel like you could safely cross the street because I don't feel like I can safely cross the street um, as it is now with all the traffic and with the cars. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Next up is Kyle. Hello, uh, I'm Kyle with the also with Bombex, um, and I just I just wanted to point out that um, we with 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 the parking, uh, and, and this is what we communicate to people now. But with the parking uh, at the Bombex parking lot, plus the capacity at 140 Pine Street, plus, plus the plaza, um, which is down the street. In the past, that has worked really well to accommodate kind of our full capacity and full vehicle load. Um, with a very minor maybe over, overflow on the um, side street next to the plaza that doesn't have any residential. Um, and, and I think that in some previous meetings when we had our agreement in place uh, during that first year, um, you know, I think we got feedback also that that was working well. Um, right now, I think it's, it's going to take some time because there has been on-street parking for a period of months to retrain the audience. And we're really trying to to do that so that people know where the sort of primary, secondary, and tertiary options are. And I think that's going to take a little bit of a process to do that because in, in my observation, uh, you know, that that worked well initially. And then once we started parking on the street, it's it's kind of hard to get people to re retrain that. But that's that's kind of that's that's what we're messaging to people um, in directions and, and maps and so on is is really those three options. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is there anyone else who has any comments for us from the public? Okay, I don't see any other hands. Um, just a comment from a DPW perspective, and I, I'll ask the chief to speak to this as well. I, I, you know, a lot of times we hear from folks that um, you know, parking is a problem in a particular area, and we may want to consider a, a parking restriction. Um, and, and a lot of times, one of the things that we can do on a temporary basis is post uh, temporary no parking signs. So we most recently did this um, in the area by the high school uh, westbound on Route 9, just as sort of a trial to see uh, how it worked, how people would respond to it, how that would alter driver behavior, where they would park instead of parking in this particular location. 
Um, and that's, you know, a, a tool that we have to look into options rather than making a permanent change to our code of ordinances. Um, we can do something sort of on a temporary basis and see um, if that is helpful. So that's um, one potential scenario that we can consider if we have a particular pinch point or a particular problem spot, we could go for, um, you know, potentially a temporary um, no parking area and just kind of see what people do with that before making any larger decisions. Um, so that's just a, a possibility. I don't know if anyone on the commission has any comments about that or if anyone has any comments about that, but I just thought I, I would throw that out there. I don't know, Chief, what you find your experience with that, um, it, you know, just kind of doing something like that. Yeah, we've had some success with that in some areas. I know that one of the things whenever this, this commission talks about um, making no parking on streets is the goal might be to target particular problematic times of day and days of week, but then all the other times people want to park in those spaces, you know, residents who live on the street or their guests or whatever else. So that's the only thing when we start making no parking zones. Um, is you're losing you're losing street parking, which is something that I know many people find valuable. So definitely, if we were to consider a no parking area and we wanted to do that, I would definitely want to pilot it. I think that's a great idea as a way to to see um, if that alleviates the problems that people are reporting, and then how residents feel in the neighborhood if they like not having that parking available. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. So I, I, I'm not sure if anyone on the commission has any comments or questions on the things that we've talked about um, to this point. Any comments from anyone else? Okay, anyone else from the public uh, who wishes to speak on this? Okay, seeing and hearing none, Cassandra, we appreciate you being with us this afternoon and thank you for the information on uh, your recent um, efforts uh, to address this situation. I think we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at the area and see if there's particular areas um, that, that again might be particularly problematic, a pinch point or something that's interfering with uh, the administration of, of um, you know, public safety operations. Um, and again, as I mentioned in my opening comments, uh, that is a little bit of a difficult intersection with um, sort of a, 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 an, a stop sign um, by the memorial that, that is um, kind of a difficult alignment. So that's something that we will be taking a closer look at. So we, again, we appreciate your efforts and we appreciate you being with us this afternoon. So um, thank you, and we will have an update on this at a later meeting, but I appreciate everyone's attention to this matter. So, okay. Next up on our agenda is updates from the commission chair and vice chair about previously submitted traffic calming requests. So first up is Fruit Street. Um, this traffic calming request came to us. Uh, back in August of 2021, we discussed it at this commission in September of 2022. Um, so on the screen is the response form uh, that Chief Casper and I have signed, and we have also notified the uh, ward counselor and the, uh, the folks who uh, submitted this um, application. Um, it, what we find in this area is that uh, it, it is a kind of a densely uh, populated area and with quite a bit of uh, traffic and parking congestion. Um, and what we heard at this commission was that there was a desire for potentially um, or from the public for, you know, to make the street a one way or, you know, make some sort of alterations. Um, we believe that by striping some parking spaces here, that will go a long, uh, that will go a long way towards sort of maintaining order and uh, controlling where people are parking in the traffic flow. Um, so that is our recommendation. Uh, and we consider this matter closed. So those parking spaces uh, will be striped when we are able to. Does anyone have any comments on Fruit Street? 
Okay, seeing and hearing none. Next up is Fair Street. This traffic calming request came to us in July of 2021. We discussed it here in September of 2022. Um, and uh, again, in front of you on the screen is the, respo the response form uh, signed by the chief and me. And our recommendation in this area is uh, some warning signage. Um, so there's uh, there's definitely some uh, animals in the road and uh, there is a curve there. Um, so we will be putting up some signage to communicate to drivers what they should expect in the area. Um, and again, those signs will be installed as soon as we are able to and we consider this matter to be closed. Anyone have any comments on Fair Street? Okay, next up is Earl Street at Grove. So this was submitted to us at uh, September 2021. We discussed it at TPC September of 2022. Um, so this area, I'm sure uh, everyone here is familiar with it. There is uh, a lot of asphalt and exposure for pedestrians who are trying to cross the street or, or cross from bike path to bike path. Um, and it is uh, certainly less than ideal if you are on foot or on bicycle and trying to navigate those um, very wide crosswalks. We think that in this area, um, uh, uh, enhancement to the crosswalks would go a long way. We've done work like this on South Main Street to sort of tighten at the alignment of uh, South Main Street and Federal Street, um, also something discussed at TPC some, some time ago, um, to just sort of tighten up that alignment, shrink the crossing distances, and better communicate to drivers uh, that there is foot traffic and bicycle traffic in the area. So I expect that we will be generating uh, an engineering design and putting some paint on the ground and, and sort of cleaning these crosswalks up to make them pop a little bit better to drivers um, as soon as we are able to do that. So any comments or questions about this intersection? Okay, next up is the Northampton High School on Elm Street. So uh, also a topic of conversation um, at this commission. Um, and, and I believe we've had uh, a, quite a bit of conversation around this. We have recently signed a uh, contract with for design with Fuss and O'Neill. It's a nearly $400,000 uh, contract. And what that contract will do is allow Fuss and O'Neill to generate a design for the improvements that they recommended in the feasibility study that was discussed at this commission um, and generate bid documents um, so that we can actually hire a contractor to do the work. Um, we just executed this contract and I expect that survey will be mobilizing late this week or early next week. So people will start to see some activity in the vicinity of, of the high school on the side streets, Riverside Drive, Woodlawn um, surveyors will be out there just kind of getting the lay of the land. That's that's really the preliminary step. We're also doing some utility investigation. We have very old water lines in the area, very old sewer lines in the area. Uh, it's very difficult to do a roadway realignment project on top of very old infrastructure. So we need to take a very careful look at that. Um, and see if we need to sort of turn this into a larger utility project. Um, that project is moving um, for the purposes of our traffic calming program. Um, we consider this matter to be um, uh, closed just from a traffic calming perspective. Um, I will be back here with updates um, and looking for input for um, the various design ideas that Fuss and O'Neill comes up with. Um, and those will be communicated out to the community at large uh, as this process um, goes forward. Any comments or questions on the high school? Okay, and the last item is West Street. So we've received uh, multiple traffic calming requests for West Street. We also discussed West Street here in December of 2022. Um, we do see uh, heavy traffic volumes and speeding on West Street. 
um, also had uh, an unfortunate incident um, with a pedestrian versus car uh, down by the Smith College parking garage. So um, Smith College um, has been good enough to fund a feasibility study along this entire corridor and also the Elm Street corridor from their main gate um, down to the Route 66 intersection. So it's a fairly extensive uh, study of ways to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, it's a it's a nearly seventy thousand dollar feasibility study funded by Smith. So City Council accepted that gift, um, and so uh, again, Foss and O'Neill, our um, our traffic engineers are are going to start uh, looking at all of the crosswalks in this corridor, bike lanes, um, kind of pinch points, and ways that safety can be improved. Um, so I will be communicating out, um, you know, just sort of milestones um, in this process, and I'll come back with to the commission with updates as as that unfolds. Any comments or questions on West Street? We have a considerable backlog of traffic calming applications, so it it is um, it does feel good to um, at least have some uh, progress on some of these. So thanks for your attention to that. Okay, we move through the agenda quickly. Does anyone have any new business tonight? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? I move. Second. Okay, Carolyn made the motion and Nancy seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, call the roll, please. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? It's like we lost Devin. Devin has won. Uh, Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. It's a unanimous vote to leave. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next month.